Welcome to January's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is minimize deviation in array. You are given an array nums of n positive integers. You can perform two types of operations on any element of the array any number of times. If the number is even, divide it by two. So if it's like four, then we can make it a two. If the element is odd, multiply it by two. So one thing to note, if it's odd, we can only multiply it by two one time because once we multiply by two, it becomes even. So we can't make it bigger than that. Now the deviation of the array is the maximum difference between any two elements in the array. Return the minimum deviation the array can have after performing some optimal number of operations. Okay, so if we had uh, this example here, you can imagine when it's odd, or I'm sorry, when it's even, we can divide it by two any number of times. So we can make this a two, we can make it a one. Um, let's first start off and give you a hint by assuming to start with the minimum possible values for each number. So we can do that pretty easily. We can just go through this entire array and if it's even, we could divide it by two until it's odd basically. So this becomes a one, this is already odd, this is already odd, this becomes a 10, five, and this remains a three. Uh, so these are the minimum values for each one of these elements. Now, what about max? Well, max is pretty easy as well. If it's odd, we have to multiply it by two. If it's even, we have to keep it. So this would be four, this is two, this would be 10, this would be, no, this would stay 20, this would be six. So what does these two things represent? Well, basically these two represent like the range, right? Between um, whatever number we have, we could go to the minimum of this number or we can go to the maximum of this number but keep in mind with this there could be any number of numbers in between like here with the 5 and 20 we have like 5 and then that can become 10 that become 20 and we can imagine this could be like huge depending on what number is given to us um, luckily all we can do is start with the minimum and just multiply it by 2 all the way up to this limit here to know what the let's say candidates are now, how do we find the max deviation? Well, like say we couldn't do any operations, what would we do to find the max range? Well, it's pretty simple, right? If we sorted it in order, uh, basically we just take the minimum value and then the maximum value and subtract. Subtract the maximum value here from the minimum. And that's gonna be the max standard deviation, uh, well not standard deviation, max deviation, right? Because everything in between doesn't really matter. It's, all we care about is what's the minimum and what's the max and what's the difference between the two? Okay, so that's good. Um, say that we had some sort of data structure to like store this information, right? And what we'd have to do then is take our number that we have and find our deviation, and then maybe take that number and see if we increase it, can we decrease our deviation? So for example, with one here, uh, say that this was the first element, we know that we can multiply by two, Let's pop it off and insert it back in. Now it's a two. And if we resort it, now it looks like this. It doesn't change, right? One to five, still the same. Well, what about here? We pop that off, we multiply by two, put it back in. Now we see that the minimum difference is actually three. It's, it's decreased. And we can just continue that unt until we get to the max for all of these guys. Now, um, that sounds simple enough and that would be enough but it doesn't account for uh, the limits here uh, because what if for example we had like this example three to five if we did that algorithm just as is uh, what we would end up calculating is two right but that's not true because we could multiply this three to six and then keep that as five and the minimum deviation would actually be one uh oh right so why not store some sort of global variable then to store that max value. And we can start off with five, and each time we multiply by two, whatever number is the minimum, we will update our global max if it's greater, like here with three, we multiply that by two, and we find that six is greater than five, so now it's gonna be, instead of five, it'll be a six. And each time when we calculate our output, we will take our max value and subtract it by the number that we're calculating right now, which would be the minimum at that point from, from this data structure. So if we re reformulate this a little bit, what we could do is instead having two lists, we'll have like um, a tuple with the ranges. So we'll have like one and four, we'll have one and two, uh, and so on and so forth. 
and we'll use these tuples, sort it somehow, and there's a couple approaches you could take. You can use a a tree set, which is basically an ordered set of some sort, but that's kind of difficult to implement in Python. Um, probably a heap would just be fine. So we'll store it as a heap, having the minimum value at the top and the max, uh, well, I guess the max minimum value at the, at the very end. And we'll store that global max somewhere to s calculate the deviation each time. Once we find that we can no longer add any more, so say that we hit our range for one and four, like we took this and now it's a four, and then we pop that back off and we can't go further than that. Now we can't add back to our heap. So now this is no longer the length of nums. So then we'll have to stop our algorithm because that would be the end. So let's start coding this out. Hopefully it'll start making sense as we code it. So start off by initializing our heap. And what we'll do is say 4n in nums. Let's init uh, first initialize some variables, the temp. Well, I should say this is the min and this is the max. Well, I'll, do, I'll just do this. And we'll say, look, while the, start with the min, while the min is even, we will divide it by two all the way up into points that's not even. So if this is even, we can use this. Well, we will divide it by two and continue that all the way until we get our minimum. Now max is a little bit different. Remember that if it's odd, so if our max is odd, then we will actually multiply it by two because that's however many times we can multiply it. It'll only be able to multiply it once by two. Uh, if, if it's not, what is it? If it's not odd, then we'll just keep it the same. Okay, so now we want to add to our heap a tuple of the min and max, right? So we'll add to our heap a tuple of the min and the max. So let's take a look at what this looks like and should, oh, that's not the same example, but you can see like here, our range is going to be from one to two. This will be from also one to two, this will be for three to six, and this will be from one to four. Okay, great. Now, what do we want to do here? Okay, well, let's first get our max value. Okay, we want to store that max value, like I said, our, our global max. And I'm just gonna go straight forward here and just iterate down the whole heap. I'll say four i a j in our heap. Uh, just take whatever i is and whatever the maximum. That's going to be the max at first, okay? And our output, uh, we could do it a couple of ways, but I'm just going to initialize a max infinite. So this would be the max possible value in Python, um, and that way we can guarantee every time we calculate the min deviation, it's going to be less than <laughs> infinite, right? All right. So while what? Well, it's not while there's a heap. It's basically while the length of the heap is equal to the length of nums. Uh, because once we find any of our candidates are out of range, then we can't really go further because we have to make sure to account for every single element in, in our nums. Okay, so first let's pop off whatever is the minimum here. And I'll call this x and I'll call this limit. And we will heap pop off of our heap. And what do we want to do? Well, let's calculate our output. So the output is going to be what? The minimum between the output and the maximum that we calculated before and the x right now. Now, if this x is less than limit, we know that we can just multiply x by 2 and reinsert it into our heap, right? So um, what we'll do is do another heap push back to our heap. Take our x, multiply by 2, and keep the limit the same because the limit's going to remain unchanged. Uh, one thing to note, though, is remember that kind of weird edge case that happens with the 3s and 5s? We're going to have to update our max if our x times 2 is greater. So we'll take the max of max and x times 2. And as soon as this is greater than the max, then we'll start using that as our upper bound to calculate our, our output. Now, once this is finished, we can just return our output. 
and let's make sure this works. Okay, it looks like it's working, but uh, that's a sketchy example, so let's try this one. And there we go, that looks like it's working, so let's submit it. And accepted. Yeah, so I used a heap. Um, I mean, technically, you could use a list, append it, and then sort it, and, and do that. Uh, but that it just wasn't, it didn't really seem worth it. Um, I've seen some solutions that used, you know, the tree set, but um, I don't know. Like it, it's it was more complicated than it really needed to be. I think the heap is a better option. So, all right. Um, thanks for watching my channel. And seriously, seriously, do not trust me. Uh, remember, because I know nothing.